Hey, what's up, guys? Christian Brindle here. I hope this video finds you doing well. And I am joined by someone that I'm extremely excited to talk to today. I'm joined with Elizabeth Davis over at Cigna, our, our partners and our friends over at Cigna. Elizabeth, how are you doing today? I am doing fabulous. Happy to be here with you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I, I don't take it for granted. I know how busy you are this time of the year. For anybody that might not know you, Elizabeth, can you break down what your role is with Cigna and what you do with a, with a carrier? Absolutely. I lead the broker distribution channel specifically for Medicare Advantage and uh, prescription drug plans, our Part D plans. So I am responsible for managing all of our FMO relationships. I've got a team of strategists that work with the FMO on their sales strategy. I have a team of account managers that work with the FMOs on all the operational issues. And then I also oversee a team of virtual broker managers. So they mm -hmm. are just like the broker managers that your agents engage with in the field, but they're sitting at home kind of on the phone um, all the time, uh, working with brokers and helping them to sell more Cigna. I love it. Yeah. And we're going to be able to jump into some really, really great topics today. So really excited to have the chance to get to talk to you. So first question that I have for you is, you know, this is a wild AEP. We were kind of talking about it a little bit off camera, you know, before we got started. And, you know, with with industry changes in 2025, you know, including everything that was implemented was part of the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, the mm -hmm. $2,000 maximum out of pocket for members on the troop side, elimination of the coverage gap, Medicare payment program on prescription drugs. What has been the most surprising of it for you specifically? Yeah, I think it's a couple of things. First of all, we are very transparent with our agents and with our partners. We like to be kind of open about everything that we're doing and cards on the table. So I was a little bit surprised at how many competitors held their benefits back till the very last possible second. Yeah. Um, really kind of took shook me a little bit. I mean, we we held back more than we usually do, to be honest. We changed our strategy this year because I think some of our competitors took, it, took advantage of us <laughs> in 24. So we did hold back a little bit more, but we still went out. We gave everybody information. We said, this is where we're going to be. These are the products we're going to have. So, so that one surprised me. And then I think even more so, um, I think all the carriers typically have really solid product teams that understand how to evaluate benefits and manage all these changes. But I think this year it was more than they knew what to do with um, yeah. in the bid strategy. And I think a lot of carriers missed the mark. And that's why we're seeing some of the disruption that we're seeing now because carriers are getting way more sales than they thought they would in certain markets. So they're having mm -hmm. to make them you know, non-commissionable or pull them off of the electronic enrollment platforms. Um, so that one's been a little bit surprising to me as well. Yeah, it, it definitely was, you know, a year where everything everything from so many different carriers seemed like it was coming out later than what we normally see. And, you know, definitely makes for an interesting season. But I'm I'm glad you brought up the 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 portion about the non-commissionable plans. I wanted to ask about Cigna's decision that we recently heard about, you know, to stop paying mm -hmm. commission on the PPOs in a, a couple of states, Georgia you know, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, um, mm -hmm. would you be able to clarify the plans that are being decommissioned and, and suppressed and, and what led to that decision? Yeah. So the first thing I want to make sure everybody understands is this just impacts our PPO plans. So we came out very at the beginning of AEP and we said, our focus is HMO. We are really, really good at managing our HMO customers. That's what we want you to sell. And mm -hmm. we meant it when we said that. <laughs> so <laughs> when we had um, PPO plans really exceeding our expectations um, nationally, specifically in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and New, um, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Georgia. Those four states are non-commissionable, okay? Every other state where we have a PPO plan, we have just suppressed them or pulled them off the electronic enrollment platforms. If you sell them, you will still get paid a commission. We're just not making it as easy for, for brokers to access them on the electronic platforms they, they usually use. So, and you know, the rationale behind that, again, we had met our sales goals, and when you start to exceed sales goals, it adds on to your costs. And obviously, mm -hmm. again, we, you know, 
with all of the changes this year, the PPO financials were already a little shaky. And then to have this, you know, more sales than we were expecting that really caused us to take a pause, adjust our strategy. And I think the most important thing to us was that by making some minor tweaks now, well, what we see as minor, I'm sure the individual agents impacted didn't see it as minor, but by making these small adjustments now, we feel like we're better able to maintain the stability for our brokers and for our customers that, that they've come to expect from Cigna. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I appreciate you clarifying that. So but plan suppressions aside, you know, we, we, we we were having a conversation beforehand and everything that i've been able to to see you know has kind of you know suggested that cygnus having a really strong and you know successful aep this year can you provide us with a few of the cygna healthcare's highlights from a high level this season yeah absolutely i think our biggest advantage has been around our Part D benefits mm. that are included with our Medicare Advantage plans. You know, again, with the changes that were coming with the IRA, uh, we knew we knew everyone would shift strategy, and I think we took the position that we did not want we did not add a deductible, and some of our competitors added deductibles. So that's been a big advantage to us. So not only do we not have a deductible on our Medicare Advantage plans for Part D, we also have fixed copays on tiers three and four rather than moving to a coinsurance. And then we have one formulary nationally, which makes it very easy for brokers who sell in multiple markets to kind of understand and serve their customers. Another strategy that has been working for us is our Part B give back strategy. Mm -hmm. So we kind of tested the waters a couple years ago. We expanded it a little bit more in 24. This year in 25, we picked several markets where we did a full Part B give back. And those are selling like hotcakes. And again, these are primarily HMO plans with that full Part B rebate. And wherever we have that plan, it's either the number one or number two plan in the market. So we're mm. really happy with that strategy. And then I think the final thing, just for those brokers who are not necessarily only selling MA, we were able to, because we have really smart people in our Part B bid team, because our bid strategy could support it, we are able to maintain commissions on two of our three Part D plans, our standalone Part D plans. So obviously the benchmark plan, we're not paying commissions on, but that one is, is really designed for those low-income subsidy individuals that are being auto-assigned to us. So the, the two plans that brokers are selling, they can get commissions on. And that's so, it's huge, you know, with, with in, a, in a world right now, in an environment where there's not a ton of options on the PDP side for agents. I think that's that that I was very encouraged when I heard that personally. Mm -hmm. But but I mean I th I think that's great. Everything that you're sharing, we're seeing that as well on um, our side when when selling Cigna in a lot of a lot of markets. Speaking of markets, though, talk a little bit about what your top markets so far are going to be this AEP. This video is sponsored by none other than Lead Heroes, you guys. Lead Heroes is going to be your one-stop shop when it comes to your Medicare and final expense needs. People ask me all the time, Christian, what type of lead is going to be the best quality for me to work? And I don't really quite know if the answer is going to be a digital marketing lead, a direct mail lead, or a telemarketed lead. But I can say that a telemarketed lead is going to be up there with the best of them in terms of quality. A telemarketed lead has unique quality to it because there's a live person that actually speaks to the prospective customer and gets their verbal consent that they're interested and willing to speak with a licensed agent just like you. Whether it be a pre-scheduled Medicare appointment with a scope of appointment captured and then scheduled on your calendar 48 hours out, or, or whether it be a custom calling campaign where you call the shots, where your scripts are used, where it's the areas of your choosing, when it's the times of the day that you're choosing, custom calling is where you pay by the hour and essentially, it's a custom campaign built to your liking. Lead Heroes has got you covered for all of these unique type of marketing needs for agents. There's a link down in the description of this video about Lead Heroes. You can learn more about these incredibly unique lead generation services. And I think you'll want to check it out today so you can continue to grow and explode your business. So you're really good at segues. <laughs> so just want to compliment you on that. Well, so thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, our top market, so 
Historically, Texas has been our top market um, very consistently since I've been with Cigna for five AEPs now. Almost every single micro market within Texas is doing really, really well. I'll highlight Houston, Dallas, and the Valley as three of our top markets within Texas. Central Arizona is another really strong market for us. It's one that I would say is underserved, I think, a mm -hmm. little bit. It's a real opportunity for markets, for anyone who's sitting at home and selling nationally. Like seriously, look at trying to get some leads in Arizona um, because we have the highest retention there and we've got a fabulous product, including that full Part B rebate. Alabama, we, we knew Alabama was gonna be good because we fortified our network there last year. So Birmingham, Mobile, Huntsville, and even Hattiesburg, Mississippi, those are all popping off for us this year. We're really happy with their performance. I'll highlight a couple others. Uh, the Carolinas, we knew we were going to be strong in Charlotte, so that is coming true. But we're also seeing really strong sales in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then finally, another one of our legacy markets is Nashville, Tennessee. Our product team did a great job there. We lost a lot. I don't want to say a lot. We lost some members in 24, but we fixed the issues that we had with our product. And I think we're earning all that membership back. I love yeah. it. And so keeping in the keeping in the the spirit of conversations about markets right mm -hmm. now that we're 24 days into AEP is there any markets that have surprised you that you weren't expecting to be as strong as they are for Cigna yeah i think the biggest surprise for us is in the carolinas that is an area where our sales teams are all going to max out their comp plans so congratulate your broker managers in that market they are doing a great job and we really underestimated how competitive we were going to be so again i, I think I, I already mentioned those markets where we're doing really well another one is georgia another nice surprise so unfortunate side of that we had to suppress the ppo that was popular but really our HMO plans were right behind that PPO that's selling. So if you've got a customer that can tolerate an HMO, our network is outstanding, stands up against any of the competition. In particular, we're looking at our HMO plans in Northeast Georgia, which is around the Rome area. I didn't even realize it was that well populated, but it is. We're getting great sales out of that market. And then, of course, the metro Atlanta market, our HMO plans are doing really, really well there. Love it. Love it. It's always fun to kind of see because I feel like every year there's there's certain surprises. Yes, and there definitely are. And it's always interesting to kind of see which ones, you know, are are unexpected good surprises mm -hmm. like that. Talk a little bit about the preferred full savings Medicare HMO that you guys have mm -hmm. yeah. and the full part B give back plan. Where are you having success with that one specifically? So honestly, the better question there is where aren't we having success? Mm. It is doing really, really well. So if you've got that full Part B give back plan in your market, take a look at it because it's a great opportunity to really help your customers out, give some money back in their pockets, and then maybe even cross sell another, you know, a hospital indemnity plan or something like that, which, oh, by the way, we happen to have that as well. But I would tell you that, in Texas, about a third of all of our Texas production is coming from that full savings plan. And about 5% of our production in Alabama is coming from that plan. It's also available in uh, Philadelphia, in Nashville, and in Arizona. So those are all the markets where you can get that full Part B buyback. I love it. I love it. We we were talking a second ago about PDPs. First off, thank you guys again for paying commissions on two of the three PDPs. I think, like I mentioned, you know, it's it's huge in the landscape where there just wasn't and isn't a lot of options for for agents, right, in terms of being yeah. able to sell any PDPs and paying renewals, right, on your 2024 CY PDPs. How are your sales in the PDP world for 2025 so far? Yeah, it, we're very very pleased. So. You know, we we just brought back commissions on our PDP plans in 2024. And this year was the first year in a very long time. And and sales were good, right? We, mm -hmm. we hit our goals. Things were going great. But tw in 2025, we have already exceeded everything that we sold in 2024. So we're doing really, really well, not only with, you know, those that we're getting from CMS, but also the ones that our brokers are, are sending us. So 
even though that benchmark plan is our, our number one selling plan, when I was looking at the numbers for a partner last week, our saver plan is right behind it, like really mm -hmm. within a couple of hundred sales. So that's been really nice to see. I don't necessarily want to say it's a big surprise, but we're really pleased with the performance of that plan. California is the number one state for our PDP sales which is a little disappointing to me because we don't have Medicare Advantage plans there, but we're getting those, we're getting the prime in the pump with those brokers. Hopefully we'll be able to expand soon. Uh, we've been targeting it for years, so hopefully we'll get out there. I'll also highlight uh, Pennsylvania and West Virginia. That's another top selling market. Obviously, Texas, we're doing great in Texas uh, with our PDP, PDP plan and then Oregon and Washington, another state I'll kind of point out. So yeah, it's, I love it's, it. been, a, it's been a good AEP. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And it makes sense. You know, it makes sense, you know, with everything kind of going on. So we, we've talked plenty about the Advantage side for Cigna, the PDP side for Cigna. While it might be a separate contract, and, and there are, what, what I've learned over the years is that a lot of agents don't really know that. But, you know, while it is a separate contract, there's also the Cigna supplemental benefit side of things, right? Mm -hmm. That offer, you know, Medicare supplements, but also other, you know, ancillary products and things like that. What is one uh, Cigna Supplemental Benefits product that should be on the broker's radar for this AEP? I would say it's our Choice Hospital Indemnity Plan. We really, we've got a great suite of Medicare supplement products, right, as well as a ton of ancillary products. But we are launching a new hospital indemnity plan. It's been approved in 22 states, currently available in eight states. So if you're in Arizona, Texas, Colorado, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Pennsylvania, or Wisconsin, you've mm -hmm. got that hospital indemnity plan. And if you've been paying attention to what we've been talking about, most of those states also have either our full Part B give back plan or a partial Part B give back plan. So it aligns really nicely with this new launch of the hospital indemnity plan. So I think we're going to have a lot of success with that. I will tell you, though, for those of you who are listening that are on the recruitment side and recruiting agents, there's about 30,000 brokers out there that are contracted for Cigna supplemental benefits that are not contracted for Cigna Medicare Advantage and Part D. Wow. Wow. That's that's a crazy, that's a crazy stat. It is a crazy stat. Yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to get that out there and, you know, let us know if we can help you help you do some recruiting. I love it. I love yeah. it. Elizabeth, I, I, I really appreciate your time, you know, and all the information you've shared. I know we just have a little bit of time left, but is there any particular last message that you want to leave with the agents and the brokers about this AEP and, and just, you know, anything that, Sig, you know, that Cigna in general wants the agents to know right now? Yeah, you know, this has been a very disruptive AEP for everybody. And mm -hmm. as if, you know, the final rule and all of the changes coming down from CMS, of the, as if that wasn't enough, now you guys are dealing with carriers making mid AEP changes to commissions and, and how to access products. So I think I want to say just, you know, be patient with us in the midst of all of this change. Cigna remains committed to you as the broker, committed to the broker channel. So we want you to know and think of us as your committed and consistent partner. And then I really just have to say thank you. We are having an outstanding AEP. We appreciate you bringing us your business and trusting us with your clients. So thank you very much. I love it so much. Again, thank you for your time. You know, I, I, I really appreciate you spending some time and kind of delivering the message to the agents and just kind of, you know, some awareness about everything that's going on with this, this, like you said, you know, very, very, I'll say interesting AEP. Yes, very interesting. <laughs> it, last question I have for you is if there was any agents that wanted to get in touch with a member of your team or, you know, maybe even their local broker manager, what is the best way for them to do that? So it depends on how computer savvy you are. Um, all agents that are contracted with us can go on to Producers University and pull down a list of their local manager. If they can't find it or they're not comfortable doing that, I would um, refer them to our Cigna agent resource line or Carl, and mm. Carl can get them in touch with someone um, who will you know, help them out and give them any direction that they need. I think we've got some of the best broker managers in the industry. 
And again, I manage our virtual broker manager team, which is expanding by two. So again, I'm doubling down on that. We are committed to this broker channel, expanding our teams and trying to bring the best, best quality people we can to help you out. I love it. Thank you so much again for your time. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, we're only going to know it if you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more people can find it easier. Comment your thoughts down below on what you think about you know everything we talked about, You know how this AEP is going for you. We'd love to have some dialogue with you. Make sure to subscribe. We put out weekly videos to help you grow your business. And without further ado, guys, we'll be back next time with someone doing big time things in the industry. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.